Rebecca from Town & Country Tractors. Also, I have my own YouTube, is it called a page? It's called a uh, channel, my own YouTube channel called Doing Stuff with Micah. I'm going to do shameless self-promotion right now. Doing, D-O-I-M, Stuff with Micah on YouTube. That's my site, and I'm going to post this on there. That's my, that's not my, page, my channel. I'm going to post stuff on there. I'm hip. Anyway, so I'm looking at this tractor here that uh, my dad and I have been using to clear some land. And this land we're clearing is ugly. Um, tons of blackberries, just undergrowth, overgrowth, bathtubs in the middle of everything, a bunch of scrubby alder trees, bugs, um, you know, pestilence. It's, it's a nightmare. Um, and this tractor has been doing a fantastic job for what we need to do. It is called the MT-342. It's made by LS Tractors, so it's the LS MT-342. That's a lot of letters and numbers. But what that is, is uh, their three-size platform. Look at the size of this tire. This thing's a beast. Um, it is still considered a compact tractor. That's what we specialize in our area in the Northwest. You, you see a lot of compact tractors this size and smaller. Um, I think our store is a little unique because we sell a lot of larger tractors. Um, you know, not a lot of the, well, we sell a lot of the small, small, small subcompacts too, you know, tires about that big, but this is a big guy. Um, no, it's a 40 horse tractor. It's a very large frame 40. And what I really like about it is it weighs a lot like me. <laughs> so weighs a lot. Um, this thing all loaded up. I mean, we're probably around getting close to three tons. If I added up everything on it right now, juice in the tires, it's amazing. What that means is this loader can lift, it's like 2,500 pounds, and we need that out here. You know, we're driving into trees while we're closing or uh, cruising through blackberries with this grapple. And I just want to be able to get in there and use that, 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 that force and the weight of the tractor, just pop the little scrub trees out and move on with my life. I don't want to be out here for three days working on a little tiny stump. So we wanted a heavy tractor that wouldn't put up with a bunch of garbage. We didn't need a ton of horsepower. We, you know, we're not tilling, we're not, we're not making hay. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're just going around uh, mowing and, and using the loader to lift heavy stuff. We could probably do it with a smaller tractor, but why not do it with a big tractor? It's very fun. So let's look at some stuff on this tractor. Here it come. And we're gonna lift you up like that. And we're gonna turn on the screen to make sure I can see what you're seeing. This is so professional, my goodness. I'm putting away the legs on my tripod and you get to just listen to me do it. This is how you get likes on YouTube. So this loader is called an LL4106. Uh, a lot of people see this, they think that's what the tractor is called. It's not. The tractor is called the, it's hiding under there, MT342. So again, it's like a three-size tractor in the LS line. Like their third biggest, I guess. Or no, their third from the littlest, the MT1's the small guys. 42, it's a 42 horse engine. Um, I think LS makes the engine, which is pretty sweet. A lot of companies buy engines from other companies. So that's what you got there. Um, I'm not going to go over every little thing and pretend that LS invented it and nobody else does it. You're going to see a lot of tractors out there where they're advertising stuff as if it's special. Like a loader that comes off. They all do that. And if they don't, that tractor is probably a gray market tractor or something. I don't know. So anyway, let's look at the real stuff. Um, big old tires. These are a industrial tire. That's the biggest seller we got out here. Big lugs. Space in between the lugs. Seeing... You know, don't get all muddled up. Um, rear end of the tractor, and we'll get into this beautiful cutter. Oh, man, look at that thing. We'll get into that in a minute. So, but back into the tractor, look at this huge rear end. Oh, man, this, he is thick. Look at that thing. Big old rear end, big transmission. This is a big old little tractor. Man, that's cool. A lot of times you look at the back of the tractor and you can see all the way to your grandma's house. You know, no, this is a big old machine. Let's get out and do some work out here. And we've got a lot of work to do. Look at that. That's a grasshopper mower. I'm doing a review on that right now, too. Look at these blackberries. 
maybe we should look at these first. That's what you want to do. I know it. So if you are not from the Northwest, specifically the Pacific Northwest, maybe you're not acquainted with these. These are Himalayan blackberries. Look at that guy. As big as my thumb, this is one of the small ones. I see videos of guys going, oh, here's how you clear blackberries. And they just drive over the top of them. You can't drive over the top of this. <laughs> it's nuts. I've seen them where they're growing up and over barns. Which, see all this? That's what was going on. So we were using this tractor, just the utter weight of it, to smash on top of it to get the blackberries down so we could cut them to rip them out. Man, these things are huge. And after you kill them, they're even worse. Look at this. This will get wrapped up around your axles. We'll get to that too. Boy, horrible. Man, blackberries are just a pain out here. That's what everybody's dealing with. Okay, so the back of the tractor, uh, two sets of hydraulics. That's super nice to have. Um, this set goes up to our grapple. This set here, we could hook up to a backhoe, um, something else. Um, normal turnbuckle on the top of the three-point. Nothing to crow about there. That's fine. Um, this is a, a great little feature. You just have to be careful. You lift this handle up and you turn this, and then you can level out your lower link arms. That's handy. I love this box style uh, thingamajiggy. What's it called since I'm a professional tractor guy? This is called sway chain, <laughs> but it's not a chain. It's like a box style sway chain. Um, you used to see chains back here. Um, these help, you know, keep your, your lower links in place, these guys, because you don't want them swinging around because then you got stuff bashing into your tires. You got to tighten them up a bit. Um, so this is handy. This doesn't run a turnbuckle. You got to spin and then you got a nut you got to tighten and then the nut loosens up and then you look back and the tractor's, you know, tires are all of a sudden smoking, <laughs> you know, because this metal's been rubbing against it. That's a bad time. You don't want that to happen. So these you lock in place. And unless you bust through that pin, um, probably not going to have a problem. And I haven't seen one busted yet, so that's good. This is really nice. Okay, so we're hooking up an implement like this gorgeous brush cutter. Ooh. Mama, that's a nice brush cutter. And it was not expensive. I've seen brush cutters that are like $4,000 that are barely this quality. We'll get to that. So you're hooking up this gorgeous brush cutter. Um, the tractor's running. Okay, that's fine. Make sure your emergency brake's on. Um, you can lift and lower your lower three-point arms from the back. So usually you see that on tractors with cabs because you can't reach you know, up here in a cab usually to, to raise and lower your three-point arms. But this is a great feature on this tractor. I love it. Um, along with that, when you're hooking up your implement, you're not always backing up straight to it. Um, so normally what you got to do, you know, you want to hook up to these lower links. So you're out here. This thing weighs a lot. Of, a lot. You're out here with a crowbar, huffing and puffing and, and trying to, you know, get it lined up and all this stuff. Um, you don't have to do that in this case. You don't have to go get your neighbor, you know, who's always at home and you don't really like him but he's always around and so he'll help you you know get this stuff all lined up but maybe you know you have to loan it to him then and then he's gonna go break it and then you just paid a thousand bucks for repair you know just because you wanted to put your stinking brush cutter on that stinks so that's where these come in handy when you're when you're disconnected here you'd press this handle here down boop you can't do it right now because i'm hooked up but you press that handle down and that allows you to release this arm and you can slide it forward. So if you're not exactly lined up, you can line your arms up without needing to move the implement. That's really nice. It's a great feature. I wish all tractors had it, but this one does. So that was what, one of the reasons we got it. Um, top length, that's normal. Here's some power. Ooh, look at that. We can plug in a hairdryer or a, I guess a trailer. A light thing spectacular i think we'd probably like hook an led up to this thing just use the wiring for it and put an led on the back of this canopy which we'll get oh let's talk about canopies that same thing saved my bacon a couple days ago this tree right here this old walnut tree has a bunch of dead branches and i was backing up and one of the dead branches came off and boom, it fell on this canopy. I thought the world was ending, it was so loud. 
um, it saved me. It, that, that branch would have hit me on the head. At the worst, I would have had a goose egg, or at the best. I, I mean, who knows? You know, branches falling from 10, 15, 20 feet. Dude, they could really hurt you really fast. So that prevented me from having extra brain damage. Thank goodness I can't use any more. Um, okay, just regular stuff. Loader control. Doo, doo, doo. That controls my loader. It's it's on your hip. You don't have to reach your hand out for it. It's just sitting right there. I like that. Um, this is your uh, range select. So high, medium, low. Again, nothing crazy there. Everybody does it. Throttle. This turns your, your PTO on. I'll show you something neat that uh, goes with that. Uh, forward and reverse pedals. I don't like treadles. You know, the banana pedal. I like a side-to-side -side hydrostatic pedal. That's handy. I like it. Um, this is what controls those hydros on the back. So this green lever um, opens and closes my grapple. Uh, this is nice. Um, you know, you can up on the lever here, you could put buttons on here with the third function that would open and close your grapple. But um, I, I don't mind just reaching down. I get into a big pile of stuff and then close it. No big deal. Get over it. Um, this raises and lowers your three-point. This is draft, I think it's draft control. I haven't used it yet because I'm a professional. Uh, this here is draft control. You go, go read about draft control. I don't need to explain it to you. You'll figure it out. My camera work is exquisite. Uh, there's cruise back here. What I like is you can turn your RPMs down, turn on your PTO, so you're not just slamming into your implement with your PTO, and then you've already set your cruise to 540. You hit the button, boom, you're back up to 540. Super handy, I like that. Um, here's some hoses. I like this little section of the frame here that kind of protects stuff. I don't know what it really does. I'm not a scientist. Um, this right here, this is my hose going to the grapple. Oh, we could remove our front loader. Spectacular, Micah. You really knocked it out of the park with your product knowledge. Uh, here's a grapple. This is a super, super, super nice tool to have when you're doing uh, blackberry removal. Um, you can also just dig up the dirt with it. It's called a root rake uh, because, well, it's got tines and you rake roots with it. So you can open this guy up and go backwards through stuff. I'm pretty sure it's okay to do that. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, and you can use these lower tines as well to do the same thing, just drive forward gather up a bunch of junk close those jaws and make a pile of junk like we've got way off in the distance over there <sighs> i don't know what we're gonna do with it we'll figure it out so yeah that's the tractor um now i guess there's a couple more things come on we're having a good time uh we've got grandpa brakes here cutting brakes so if you're an old-timey farmer you can break one wheel, like you could stop this wheel from spinning while the other wheel continues spinning while you're pushing the gas to make a very tight turn. That's pretty handy. Um, your lights are controlled here. There's a horn, there's flashers, which I leave on all the time and then you get a dead battery. That's embarrassing. Um, there's like three headlights on here. There's regular headlights and then there's other regular headlights and then there's brights and brights and regulars. So you can have like the whole front end of the tractor lit up. Um, this is cruise control or speed control excuse me so you'd push your go pedal down and then lock it and that pedal will stay in that place and then you either have to push this button to override it or push the go pedal again no the go pedal will not stop you i learned that lesson and i drove into up a, up a big hill of junk i was dumping into the brake will stop you that's what the brake does um Look at this squishy wide. I'm not a small man. This is a nice wide seat for me. Yeah, I like that. It's it's on a uh, air suspension, so I'm not breaking my back if I'm out there mowing. That's nice. Look at the seat belt. It sits way up here, so I don't have to go digging around looking for it. It's sitting out here ready for me to grab it, so I actually use it. That's nice. Um, this is, is really neat here. So this is like a PTO override. So you can push this back here, not while you're moving and not while the PTO is on, but you can push it back here and the PTO will not engage even if you accidentally hit that yellow button right there. Um, the PTO won't come on. That's really handy, you know, so you don't get surprised and have your, you know, your, your cutter suddenly burst to life. So I think that's neat.
I'll just pull that forward. Um, emergency, or excuse me, parking brake. This tractor beeps when you don't have your parking brake on because you need to practice safe tractor parking. You don't want it rolling downhill and going through your neighbor's chicken coop tractor that they spent $3,000 building based on some plans they bought on Etsy. I guess you don't buy stuff on Etsy, but whatever. You don't want that to happen. So you press down the brakes. And while you're pressing them down, you pull this lever up and that'll lock in your parking brake. Um, last but not least, since I, uh, well, I'm the guy holding the camera. <laughs> so I can do whatever I want right now. This button right here. Oh boy. This thing, this upsets a lot of people. Let's get a good close look at this. Okay, so there's a yellow light on the dashboard that'll appear every now and then that looks like this. And then another one with the thermometer under it. That is telling you that the tractor is going into a regen mode. So regen is this EPA mandate. We don't need to talk about the politics of it. It is what it is. You can go vote, okay? But tractors have it. Don't get angry at your salesperson that they have it. No, we can't override it. Come on. I don't want to lose my job. You know, we don't want to get our license pulled. Just let us be. Okay, go vote. Go vote. Only like 30% of America votes. Are you crazy? Go vote. Encourage your neighbors to vote. And don't tell them how to vote. Just go vote. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, so what Regen does is this uh, exhaust here. All this stuff's coming out your exhaust pipe. What they do is they like collect these nasties that are coming out the exhaust in like a little canister. And that canister uh, occasionally needs a bunch of heat. I don't know exactly how it works. I'm not a scientist, but it gets really hot and it burns out all the stuff and that's better for the better for the air. So it does something. So anyway, a light comes on, people freak out and they call me. What's wrong with my tractor? There's it's overheating and there's a light. And, oh, oh. Hey, read your manual. My dad just called me two days ago with this tractor, this beautiful brand new tractor. Freaking out because he thought the tractor was broken because he saw a light. I said, Dad, go read your manual. Don't call me. Read your manual. Anyway, it's, it, it meant that the regen mode was going. Regen is fine. Um, it, the tractor gets hot. It'll burn off those gases or whatever gook is in the system. I don't know what it is. And then it'll turn itself off. Just let it be. Keep working. Or park the tractor for 15 minutes, run up the RPMs a little bit, and just let it be. And when you come back, regen will be over. You don't have to get mad. You don't have to write any letters. And everything will be fine. So that's what regen is. Um, the number one thing you don't want to do. Ooh, pro camera work, Micah. <laughs> Incredible. Um, is hit this button if you're outside. Um, that is a, it's a safety feature so you can override the regen, but it's not a permanent override. So what will happen is you can override the regen so many times or shut the tractor down while it's in regen so many times. And after a while, the computer, due to EPA regulations, it's not me, it's not LS. LS doesn't want to have extra stuff like that on there. LS likes you. They're a good company. I met many people from the company. They're good people too. Anyway, um, it, it's just got to do its thing. I'm, I'm going to stop blabbing about it. But if you defeat it too many times, the EPA uh, requires that the tractor goes into limp-in mode. That means your tractor don't move. So you got to call me. we got to bring out a truck. We're going to charge you because this is, it's not a warranty thing. You, you, you didn't operate the tractor properly. You've got to hook it up to the computer, reset the regen, and then you got a big fat bill just because you were being ornery and pushing a button because you didn't like the fact that it was doing something you didn't tell it to do. So... Anyway, okay, that's it. Sorry. Didn't want to preach that much. Let's do one more fun thing. One more. Look at this brush cutter. Oh, this is nice. People call these brush hogs. Brush hog is a brand name, so I do not call it that. People call them brush bulls. Brush bull is a brand name, so I do not call it that. People call them all sorts of stuff. Some people call it a rotary cutter. Some people call it a single spindle rotary cutter. Um... Whatever it is, it cuts brush. It turns that pile of stuff into this. And it's very satisfying and it makes a ton of noise. 
um, LS branded brush cutters are sweet. I'm in love with this thing. Look at this. We got skid shoes. Nice. We've got bumper guards. Nice. We've got a laminated tail wheel, which I think everybody has, unless it's some cheap piece of junk. Um, there's a ton of adjustability here. I do like adjustability, even though I never adjust anything. Whatever. Um, I opted to put chain guards on the back here. See these little chains? So what those chains do is they make it so if you're going through the brush and you hit a rock, the rock doesn't just fling out. Back here, it'll hit the chain and hit the ground. Um, by default, there's just a black piece of metal there uh, because the stuff we're working out working on out here is so thick. Look at this junk. Look at this. Look, look at just just this little pile. We've got to mow this. <laughs> Guys, there's like five acres of this that we're dealing with. <laughs> that bush right there, that's 15 feet tall. I measured it. Golly. Hey, there's the factory bucket for this thing. That's a big guy, 72 inches wide. Anyways, um, I didn't want this brush cutter to get all clogged up, so we put the optional chains on the back. Uh, that'll allow material to release out the back. That is an option. Um, the front has chains on it by default, so because you can't have a metal bar here, but you also need protection so you can move through stuff, but then stuff gets knocked down if it comes flying out. So that's safety. It's nice. A lot of companies use rubber. LS said, I oh, know, we're going to go the extra yard here. We're going to put chains on this sucker. Thank you, LS. Um, the metal here is really thick. How thick is it? I don't know, man. It's like a half inch. Um, look at these frame rails. They didn't have to do this. This could all be flat. Look at that guy. Oh, yeah. That's a reinforcement there. So we're not getting flexation. You know, this thing's going to stay flat and true over the years. It's not going to bend. Love it. Mm, good job, LS. Look at, look at these welds. Look at that reflection. Hi, look how nice that paint is. You can see my reflection in this paint. This is not garbage that you go buy at the uh, big box <coughs> tractor store. I'm not going to say their name. They're selling garbage, guys. Don't waste your money. This is a great brush cutter. This, see why this does this? This prevents stuff from bending. So if my brush cutter's kind of angling up a bit compared to the angle of my tractor, uh, this will this will allow some flexation um, across the top. Don't worry about it. It's science. We don't care about science around here. We just care about this beautiful blue tractor made by LS tractor we're clearing tons of land with this tractor and a brush cutter rotary brush cutter because that is a generic name this awesome grapple which we'll do videos of that later doing some land clearing this thing is an absolute unit wowzers what a machine I'm in love. Oh, I'm in love. And John from LS, if you're watching this, John is our regional manager or zone manager or whatever they want to call it. Buddy, I'm looking forward to using this box blade. You guys got to send us stuff to test. I know you want to. Maybe people will comment on this video and they'll say, hey, I want to see you use an XYZ with that tractor. We'll do it. I'm not afraid to do it. We can do anything we want out here. This place is a blank canvas. Look at this. Oh man, I haven't even got to use this yet. So we'll do a review of this later. But John, buddy, we need some more implements out, out here. I'm broke. I'm just a poor tractor salesperson using this big old blue tractor. All right, there's your last look, guys. Awesome machine. We'll do some more videos using it to clear some brush. See ya.